All right, so today I wanted to give you an introduction to the fossil material, material representing the most important of the early uh, uh, hominids, the Pleistocene hominids. And you know now that we've got 65 million years of hominid evolu of uh, primate evolution and a series of radiations, adaptive radiations, and it's in the fifth radiation, uh, somewhere in the order of six to uh, seven million years ago, that we begin to see the radiation or the, the appearance of the hominids. You saw the hominids are characterized by uh, bo large body size and standing upright uh, and walking upright, bipedality. And we can see that in all kinds of characteristics. You can see it in postcrania, that is, uh, bo uh, bones of the body below the cranium, under the cranium, or post the cranium. Um, for example, this part of a thigh bone. Uh, you can even see it in the uh, placement of the what's called the foramen magnum, the the hole that lets the uh, spinal cord into the skull, uh, the foramen magnum in quadrupeds, animals that are uh, down on all fours, that uh, spinal cord enters from the back of the skull, sort of. But for an animal that stands upright, the foramen magnum is under the skull. Anyway, there are all kinds of ways to identify uh, uh, locomotion in animals, and not only just with the uh, locomotor skeleton, but you can sometimes get it from the crania. But I'm going to focus here on the crania because the crania can tell you so much. Also, we have a lot of them. They tend to fossilize well. They're made of uh, very heavy bones that don't uh, decay away, like the ribs, for example. Um, and so we have a lot of them, and they, they preserve some uh, quite remarkable details. Sometimes even the uh, details, the fine details of the teeth, are evident in the fossil specimens. So <coughs> the three main varieties of early hominids. Now, there's an online guide uh, to the chronology. There's a guide also to the, uh, the actual uh, uh, anatomical characteristics. I just wanted you to see them sort of in a three-dimensional sense. All right, you remember that there are two varieties of australopithecines. Australopithecines, uh, the gracials and what we call the robust, the lighter built ones and the more heavily built ones. You remember that the more heavily built ones, the robust, become extinct somewhere on the order of a million years ago, whereas the gracials, the, the general consensus seems to be that one of the variety of the gracials evolves into early homo. By the way, this is uh, in the foreground here, a modern human skull, just to give you sort of a comparison to what I'll be showing you. All right, the uh, gracial uh, australopithecines. <clears throat> this is a reconstruction of uh, a, a gracial, uh, both the skull and also the jaw, or the, the brain case, the face, and also the jaw, the mandible. And you can see in many ways um, uh, not too different from uh, a close ancestor of the gracial australopithecine, close relative, Oh, I don't have it here, a chimpanzee, uh, but not too terribly different in some ways from a chimpanzee. Remember, there is a degree of facial prognathism. They do have big teeth, or she does, uh, this grass seal does have big teeth. Uh, but on the other hand, it does have some distinctively hominid characteristics, a particularly large brain case in relation to the rest of the body, and look at the lack of canine. Well, there's the canine there, but it's massively reduced. You remember, canine reduction, a characteristic, a typical characteristic of the hominids. And here you can see, here's a female gorilla. And no uh, canine reduction here. You remember, they're used in threat displays. Well, this is uh, not a hominid. This is a hominid. One of the characteristics, much smaller canine teeth than in this uh, other great ape. You also see, to a degree, a uh, less uh, massive construction of the skull uh, altogether. Look at the brow ridges. Look at the attachment points, these ridges for the muscle uh, musculature. We'll get into that a little bit more when we look at the robust australopithecines. But uh, it's certainly, the, the gracial australopithecine is certainly uh, more like a modern human being than they are like a gorilla, for example. But they're somewhat like a chimpanzee. And they are really, if you, if you want to look for a missing link in the fossil record between humanity and the rest of the primate order, the gracial australopithecines are, are, are a pretty good missing link. 
And again, not everyone, but most anthropologists would agree that they probably are uh, uh, one of our closest links or one of our, our best examples of a fossil link to the rest of the primate order. Now it's around six or now it's around eight million years ago that we diverge from the chimpanzees essentially. And we have a lot of genetic similarities to chimpanzees, but we're also different. And the uh, the count of time uh, reflected in the mitochondrial uh, uh, DNA clock, essentially, you can read about that in your book. Uh, the amount of time uh, represented uh, by the distance between modern humans and chimpanzees, something on the order of eight million years. So, at basically eight million years ago, there was some variety of, of a chimp-like creature, um, and then it split, it diverged, and so some of them became hominids, whereas others continued on to be what uh, chimpanzees are today. Now, those hominids, as I said, they're first typified by the gracile australopithecine. And here's one. And we have them also, we have fossil material from other ones earlier than the gracils that are on your cr chronological chart. You remember we have... Uh, 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 Postcranial material, we have uh, bones indicating uh, bipedalism as early as six million years ago with the new genus Aurorin. It's right at the very, very bottom of your chronological chart. Still, uh, gracile australopithecine is evident at least by about, four, uh, about three and a half million years ago uh, and continuing up to the origins of early Homo about two million years ago. We'll come to Homo in just a moment. Gracile australopithecine. Very good link between humanity and the rest of the primate order. Some characteristics in common with the other large apes, some characteristics in common with Homo. Here's a, an evolutionary, what we would call a dead end or an evolutionary extinction. This is the robust Australopithecine. And the robusts are, in some ways, like a gorilla. You see the massive brow ridges, heavy, heavy buttressing, heavy buttressing above the eyes, and massive bones right through the whole face. Massive bones right through the whole face, kind of like this gorilla as well. And what all of this suggests, as well as the gigantic teeth, the molars and the robusts are roughly four times the size of uh, modern human molars, um, what this suggests in these massive teeth and the massive buttressing and massive construction, architectural construction essentially, uh, of the robust Australopithecine is an adaptation for distribu distributing chewing stresses. That is, the, as they are uh, processing their diet with their teeth, the stresses of, of chewing this vegetation, this vegetable diet they're eating, uh, is, is absorbed, or all those stresses are absorbed and pushed through these buttresses. They're just like the, the design on a cathedral, the way that they distribute uh, 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 sort of uh, chewing forces. And the same thing in a gorilla. The robusts have such a heavy, uh, coarse diet that they're really grinding away at, in fact, that they have uh, um, uh, teeth that have been worn flat. Now, the robust, this one from Olduvai Gorge, uh, Olduvai Hominid 5 from Olduvai Gorge, you can't see the rest of the skull or the brain case, but you can see it in this much earlier specimen from about two and a half million years ago. This is uh, what's called the Black Skull WT-17000 from West uh, Lake Turkana in Kenya. Very, very massively constructed face. Again, huge teeth. Well, the, the tooth sockets, the teeth are actually gone from this one. This is what's called even hyper-robust. 